Okay, well, hello, everybody. Welcome to another session of accounting. Today, we're going to talk about how to do a multiple step income statement. And in order to do one of these income statements, we have to be given some data. And I've supplied you with some data over to the left. And just a quick little uh, reminder here what an income statement does. Remember that an income statement is something that provides information related to profitability for a company. When we were in the first four chapters of our accounting principles course, uh, we were trying to figure out how to do that calculation of profitability. And we determined that it was simply revenue minus expenses. If you look at the top right in that little yellow shaded area, you'll see a quick little reminder, revenue minus expenses will either give you a net income or a net loss. If doing the subtraction, revenue minus expenses gives you a positive result, it's net income. If it gives you a negative result, it's a net loss. Well, now in Chapter 5 or whatever chapter you happen to be in where you're learning merchandise merchandise accounting, we, we, we basically change the income statement up a little bit because we now have some new accounts in the mix that we have been exposed to, and things like cost of goods sold are now involved in the process. Remember, cost of goods sold is an expense account. So if you think about it, if we did the income statement like we did in the first four chapters, cost of goods sold would be thrown into the expense category, which it should be. However, when you do a multiple step income statement, we isolate the cost of goods sold expense by itself. So it stands out from the rest of the expenses. By doing that, we're actually able to determine gross profit. So when you separate the sales and the COGS, or the cost of goods sold, that's basically the stuff that's related to the product you are selling. Anything that is associated with your company that is not associated with the product, and it's an expense to you, we'll label that as an operating expense. So basically, in this type of financial statement, we're separating the cost of goods sold expense from the other expenses. Now, in the first four chapters, expenses were easy to identify. They ended with the word expense. But starting with this new information, we now have this account called cost of goods sold. So if you didn't know uh, it was an expense account, there was no word there to kind of help you out, except for the very first word, which is cost. Cost is just another way of saying expense. So in essence, it's like they put the word expense in front of the word instead of at the end like we're normally used to seeing. Another expense account that I added to this list for us to work with is freight out. Even though that does not end in an expense word, it's still considered to be an expense. So if you look at the top right in the little pink area, I have a quick little reminder of how we do this income statement. We take our sales, we subtract out our cost of goods sold, it gives us our gross profit, subtract out all those other expenses, and then that will determine whether or not we have net income or net loss. If there are other types of revenues other than sales, if there's other types of expenses other than cost of goods sold and operating expenses, then you would actually go even further in this income statement to determine other revenues and other expenses. But we won't have those in this particular example, so we'll keep it simple. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off by putting the heading revenue from sales. And I'll put a little colon symbol. So now I'm going to list all of our sales items. So that's going to be these guys right here. I like to refer to these guys as like the sales family, like we're playing Family Feud. Here comes the sales family. So anything related to sales is going to go in this section. So we've got our sales revenue. And the amount of the sales revenue is $800,000. i will put in my dollar signs afterwards. Then we're going to subtract out our two contras. And that's our sales returns and allowances. And our sales discounts. We want to line these up. And we're going to put in the amount. So $12,000 and also $2,000. So I'm taking them directly off of the trial balance. I now want to add these two together. And I want to put their result on the same line as the 2000. So I also want to subtract this result from.
from the 800,000 and that's going to give me net sales. So if you've ever received a paycheck from work, you know how your paycheck shows your gross pay, shows your deductions, and it shows your net pay. Well, think of this as like that. So we have our gross revenue, which is the 800,000. Looks like our deductions, our sales returns, and sales discounts. And then we have our net pay, which is the same thing as our net sales. So we're going to subtract the 14,000 from the 800,000, and that's going to give us net sales of 786. Okay, so that's our revenue section. It used to be just revenue and then followed by like service revenue. Now we have a little bit more bite to the revenue section because we are no longer performing services. We're now selling stuff to our customers. So now here comes um, our first expense. We're going to subtract out our cost of goods sold. And that was 480,100. And let me put that in red since we're going to be subtracting it. And what we're going to end up with is something that's brand new to us this chapter. And the result of this subtraction is called gross profit. It's not your net income. It's your preliminary income before you take out your uh, regular operating expenses. So you want to make sure that this number is always positive. If it's negative, um, the company's in trouble because this is the, the profit they make from buying, from basically selling uh, their material and buying their material. In other words, why would I be in business if I'm in business to lose money? Nobody's in business to lose money. So they're always trying to make some type of profit. So from the items themselves, you know, this stuff that we sold for $800,000, it costs us $480,100 to basically acquire. So just from the product itself, we're looking at $305,900 as a gross profit. But is that our bottom line? Not yet, because we also need to, you know, turn the lights on where we work. We need to run heat or air conditioning. We got to pay employees. We may have to advertise. We may be renting the building that we're in. So there are other expenses as well, but the gross profit relates to the product itself. Okay, so now let's jump in and put in the operating expenses. Back in the first four chapters, we just called it expenses. But because we now have cost of goods sold in the mix, we now need to differentiate between cost of goods sold and those regular expenses. So operating expenses are these other ones that I did not put in blue down here. So let's highlight those guys. Okay, we'll put, there's the other ones that are in blue. Okay, so let's go ahead and put in our salaries and ex salaries and wages expense. We've got our advertising expense, our freight out, and our rent expense. Remember, we already dealt with the cost of goods sold earlier. So now let's put in all those expenses. And by doing this, we now want to, we've shown the expenses and now we want to add them up and subtract them from the gross profit. And we come up with $297,000 in total operating expenses. And at this point, we want to subtract them from our gross profit. And we have our answer. And we'll call this net income because it's positive. And let's double underline it to make it look fancy. And remember, the first number in each column gets a dollar sign. 
and final answer gets a dollar cent. And that's the income statement. Now we could do more with this if we had more data. Uh, if you had other revenues and other expenses, this net income would have actually been called operating income. And then you would subtract out other expenses such as interest expense, maybe losses that the company may have experienced. You could add in other revenues such as interest revenue or even service revenue. So if we were doing a hybrid company that was mixed with service and sales, the income statement would still look like this, but instead of having net income as our final answer, we would have operating income, and then underneath that, we would have other revenue, such as service revenue, and interest revenue, and let's say gains, and then you would subtract out your other expenses, such as interest expense and losses, and then we would end up with our net income, and of course, that net income is before tax. So don't ever forget that one. But that's your income statement. So definitely different than the way we used to do it when it was just simply revenue minus expenses. That's still the guts of the income statement, but now there's just a little bit more detail. All right, hope you enjoyed this. What we're gonna do in the next uh, session is we're gonna take the same trial balance and we're gonna do the closing entries associated with a merchandising company. All right, you guys take it easy and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.